listen to interviewers, and they never really ask the person, well, what do you, what are you, you know, what do you see? What's your real vision? And, and, and so, like, where, like, where, where, where are you coming from, David? Arthur Johnston? Uh, the same place everyone else is coming from. But, see, and you're, but you're aware of it. Uh, I seem to be aware of some things. Okay, what? What's, what's your best take? Uh, well, the big one that gets me my classification of weird, the, the whole ridiculous notion that the entire universe is structured in such a way that fate is total and perpetual, uh, that in fact what we think of uh, choices uh, isn't really what it is at all. That, <clears throat> yeah, the, the biggest stick, if you can get a handle on it, you got a handle on everything. That no one's ever made a choice before because they can only enact their experience. And each person only has one experience. And we all share the singular experience of a beginningless universe. And so we're much more cosmic beings, naturally and normally, than we generally think we are. And so, so there's, but there's a problem here. Uh, the suffering. Uh, so the trick with suffering is to find its root. Like the trick with suffering is to deal with the suffering so you don't have to suffer anymore. That's, suffering is just uh, something to fix. If you're sad, you figure out how to be happy. If you're suffering, you figure out how not to suffer. And if people put their minds to it, they'll see the grand generality and get to that transcendent point where they can't forget that suffering is an illusion. Uh, and then they can face a really hard future much more effectively and stoically and efficiently uh, than giving into psychotic fears of being really, really horrible to preserve civilization. So, so how do you ground yourself? Like, how do you how do you live? Like, how, what's your day composed of? In your like, how, what's your foundation? Uh, I have no desires that I would go crazy if they wouldn't happen, and so anything can happen in the now, and I can deal with it, and so I'm perpetually prepared to face anything the future can throw at me. What about the present right now, where, we, where we're in a world basically in riots and, and in famine and, and the huge refugee camps are uh, d developing all over the world, pretty well all over the world. Like, like what, that, that, that's a really suffering picture that we have of the world today. Yeah. Well, we've sort of been depending on corruption for a long time and we're finding out that it's not sustainable and we're finding out what exactly that level of not sustainable uh, is. It, it essentially, it comes down to when everyone becomes smart, a.k.a. nice, that we can't depend on corruption to feed us anymore and then suddenly we're going to find the catalytic change the growing food everywhere uh smart people dealing with crazy people <clears throat> so you so you're <clears throat> you're in a battle with the courts over uh your your right to sleep and and uh their monopoly on the land and and uh so <clears throat> Until this is legal, you can't you can't really do do that. You can't establish on the land. 
you know, we're, we're forced into battlegrounds. Yeah, well, uh, people generally aren't clear on what freedom is. Uh, really, we're not free unless our home is free. <clears throat> and where is that the case? Uh, nowhere that I've seen. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't exist. So that, that's, that's your struggle, that, that's what you're up against. Uh, sort of. It's more of riding a, uh, riding a wave, or riding a juggernaut. It's just this new societal phenomenon that's going to happen. It's not really a big battle and not really a big fight. It's just what a culture feels when it's about to face its harsh evolution. We could do it in a day, right now. Like we can get around the whole world. We can uh, have instant communication ability. Everybody could be talking to everybody right now, almost right now. Yeah. What What would move them? But what would they like? What would be that one message that people would want to take to somebody and say, "I heard this, and I believe this, and I'm going to do this." More of a blessing than anything. Just to to say the word patience so people can find when they're in any any situation figuring out their own thoughts internally or dealing with assholes or cops or or pretty girls or anything grandly wonderful or anything grandly horrible that they can love patience when they step into the situation and have the wherewithal to not panic. And that means everything. That, that's, that's the mark of a grown-up human. <clears throat> I think it would be nice if we could, that we really have some good dialogues, like if, if people could actually talk about real issues and uh, settle them for real. And we, and, and we need to be speaking with people who have authority to act and, and to do, make, make things happen. Like, like, we need to make some stuff happen here, or, or we're going to have, like, a, an all-out catastrophe. Well, that's what's happening with the court case. The, there's been the step into the political and legal arenas. This has happened already. We're in the middle of it. We have the big appeal coming up that's going to verify that cities don't have certain rights to ignore other rights. <clears throat> but they don't, and they're acting illegally. They well, think the city's illegal in its action. And this case that's being heard on September 19th is dealing with exactly that. Exactly. So this is uh, David of uh, One Day Being Three Days Communication Network. It's at victorycity.ca. It's not up and running yet, but uh, we're just waiting for the text to arrive. And then... Uh, VictoryCity.ca